Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing live for Wednesday the 15th of November. I'm Tony Haggerty at a Haggerty 10 on the X or the Twitter handle. And I'm joined once again, twice in one week, there we go, by the young man and talent that is Aidan McDonald at Aidan C. McDonald on the Twitter handle or X handle. Aidan, twice in a week, can he beat it? I know I'll be scaring people away, Tony. The way it's going, but uh, yeah, no, it's good to be on, mate. Always a pleasure. Like buses, eh? You wait for one and then two come along in the one week, yeah, marvellous. And you are just saying you're getting work done in the house, so that's why you're in some kind of box room and uh, the lighting is uh, the way it is. So we'll excuse you for that. We can still hear you and get your thoughts on everything Celtic. It never stops, even though it's the international break. But first and foremost, as we do every morning, we will big up our sponsors. And the morning briefing is brought to you by MPH Group and their Scotland's award-winning family-run all-trade specialists covering all of mainland Scotland. And every service you offer automatically enters you into MPH's incredible holiday giveaway. And you can win a seven-night stay at the luxurious five-star Moon Palace Resort in Cancun, Mexico. And now that winter's rolling in, if you're thinking of giving your heating system a boost, MPH has an enticing Navi and Boiler winter promotion just for you. You can see that in the advert there. And if you opt for a Navi and Boiler installation through MPH Boilers, not only are you choosing top tier efficiency, but you're also getting a free Navi and internet controller. And that little gadget can crank up your boiler's efficiency to an impressive 98%. And the cherry on top of that is that they're covering the first year service with no added cost. And if you're wondering why Navi and they're gunning for the product of the year, at the h &V News Awards, which is the Oscars of the heating world. And to top it all off, the Navian On Range comes comes with a 12-year parts and labours warranty. So big shout out to MPH, because they're also nominated for the Small Company of the Year at the same awards. And MPH even offer flexible finance options. So if you're considering giving up for a winter chill, make a smart move with MPH and Navian, and you'll find all the links to the MPH's social media sites and telephone number in the description of this video. There you go, Aidan. We got that out of the road, first and foremost. Marvellous. Now, Aidan, as I say, it's never quiet with Celtic in the international break. And the headline is Odin Tiago Home, the natural successor to Matt O'Reilly. The reason I brought this up was because Matt O'Reilly was speaking to Danish journalists uh, this week. And... Uh, Tip Bladder, I think he spoke to the Danish uh, outlet, if that's how you say it. I'm not sure. Tip and Bladder, something like that. Anyway, and Matt O'Reilly said this. Now, bearing in mind, Matt O'Reilly signed a new four-year deal with Celtic, contracting to the club to 2027. But this is what he said. I've played in the Champions League against many good teams, and I feel I'm ready to take the next step. But I'm already playing for a good team. It's hard to say what's going to happen. Now, I don't know about you, but every time Matt O'Reilly uh, goes, or there's an international break, Matt O'Reilly's asked a question by Danish journalists about his future. Now, as as we've spoke about off air, he did sign that deal until 2027. We are not naive enough to think that he will stay until 2027. But uh, what do you make of that? Is that him being cryptic? Is that a come and get me plea? Or do you see him leaving at the end of this season? Hey, I I don't, I don't think he's like, you know, wanting away desperately or anything like that. Tony yeah, Gilliam yeah, yeah. not long signed a new deal. Mm. I think a lot of fans were probably not not going to be under any illusions that Matt O'Reilly wasn't going to beat Celtic for uh, the length for this current contract, whether it was this summer coming or, you know, the year after that he would move on. I think he's taken these performances to such a high level since the start of the season that maybe he, he will move on from Celtic a, a wee bit long, a wee bit sooner, sorry, than expected. I hope that isn't the case. I'd like him to stay for as long as possible because I think he's a brilliant player. Is it a come and get me plea? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I would you know, sort of go go that far. I, I'm sure he, he, he does want to play in the Premier League, as a lot of players do, particularly given you know, he was born in England. He's played for Fulham, who I, I'd imagine at some point during his time in the academy, I know they're sort of established in the Premier League now, but they were probably pivoting back and forth when he was in the academy in terms of being up and down. So he'll have experience of being in a, a Premier League academy, so to speak. I have no doubt that is probably his, his end goal, is to try and uh, 
be, be in the Premier League uh, and as you were talking off air, it feels like Denmark are kind of desperate for him to go and be playing there because he's always getting asked about it. Despite yeah, being able to actually make an appearance for Denmark, he's yeah. he always been doing press during international duty and he's always asked about uh, whether or not he's going to the Premier League. So I think it's probably a question we're going to get constantly between sort of now and over the summer, particularly if he's in the squad for Euro 2024. I'm sure there'll be 20, plenty of questions about it, Tony, but fingers crossed he is here for a bit longer. And I want to make this perfectly clear. Everybody knows my thoughts on Matt Arelli. I can't speak highly enough of him. I, I christened him a baller, and he is a baller. I, I'm loath to see him leave. I just don't like to hear him speak like that. I kind of try and connect dots and join lines and stuff like that. But I, I would hate to see him go. And the reason we're discussing it is because this is what was said. And again, I, I'm making the point that whenever he goes on international duty, he always seems to be asked this question by a Danish journalist or Danish media, and he's always fending it off. And then he also said he's perfectly happy. So I would be, I would love him to stay until 2027. I can't see that because he's just a wonderful footballer and there, are, there is growing interest in him by the week. And he has he has played something like twelve, was it twelve league games so far this season? And he's been man of the match in nearly every one of them. You have to you have to say that he's he's been an excellent contributor. He's added goals. Uh, he already was a good assister of goals, but he's added goals after a, a pep talk from the manager. And I would just love him to stay for as long as uh, he possibly can and work under Brendan Rodgers. But I'm realistic. I live in the real world, but I also threw in Odin Thiago Holmes' name, not in terms of a natural comparison. I was just talking about is if Matt O'Reilly did leave at the end of this season, could people see Odin Thiago Holmes stepping up? That was the kind of question. I'm not comparing the players in terms of ability yet, Aiden. I've not seen enough of Odin Thiago Holmes to see whether or not his career trajectory would be the same as Matt O'Reilly's, but I've seen enough of Odin Thiago Holmes to know I'm watching another cracking football player. That's 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 the way I was couching the question. And uh, yeah, <coughs> as I say, I'm not selling Matt O'Reilly uh, in in any shape or form. <laughs> I would want I would want to pin, pin him down to Jim McLean, Dundee United type contract, ten years, twelve years, something like that. Even if I could, but yeah, I I just it just ups me a wee bit that. He's had to fend this question off or bat it off consistently. And as you say, he's not even he's not even got his first uh, full Danish international cap yet. He's got four caps for the uh, under-21 squad. So, yeah, I mean, it, those those quotes intrigued me a wee bit. It just kind of left it all kind of open, uh, open in the air, didn't it? Or in the air. Yeah, it, it did, and it, it's the sort of thing that has happened to other players before on international duty. I, I remember, uh, I think it might have been last year, uh, Tatati was asked about it before, Kyogo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think probably Tom Roderick used to always get asked about it when he was at Australia as well, when I mean, he was still playing for Celtic. So, yeah, I'm sure the players are kind of used to it. I'm sure they've been sort of given a PR line to sort of <laughs> time uh, before, before going on international duty, but... It's just the sort of he's playing so well, Tony. As he's probably been one of Celtic's best players this season. Some might even say he's been the big, the best so far. Yeah, and that is going to happen. Uh, particularly when you're putting in performances in the Champions League, there's going to be, I, I'm sure, interest in Premier League clubs, and there's then going to be speculation about his future. I wouldn't have any worries about him going in January or anything like that. Just given the length of deal he's just signed, I think it would be. Hopefully, it's not the summer, but I think that'd be there. Always, they would move on. So. I think we've still got plenty of football to see uh, Matt O'Reilly playing. You know, Celtic shouldn't be under pressure for him to move on in the summer, given the <coughs> length of time that will be left on his deal, as you're saying, 2027. But the, the great thing is, if he does, he does go, then there'll be a hefty fee dished out for him. In terms of uh, Oden Holm being a successor, you are completely right to say that he, he looks a talented player. I think it is a wee bit early. If O'Reilly was to go in the near future, based off what I've seen from home and assuming that Celtic would be getting a hefty fee for O'Reilly, I would be hoping that there would be a significant amount of that fee reinvested and somebody to come in and deploy some. I know that's maybe not always been the case in the past and even maybe you could argue last season, or that last season into this season with Jota, it's not really been the case. But 
uh, hopefully it would be for Matt O'Reilly and home could be somebody down the line that maybe can come into that role. But yeah, at the moment, if Matt O'Reilly was to move on anytime soon, I'd be hoping it would be a sort of player of similar ability that's bought in for a decent fee. The manager rates Oden Chagel home very highly, so I kind of base a lot of that on that as well. But also, I mean, Celtic hold all the cards and the aces with regards to Matt O'Reilly. People are talking that he will command a, a record fee. The record fee is £25 million that Celtic got for both uh, Kieran Tierney and uh, Jota. So if you're talking, in, you're certainly talking in that ballpark, aren't you, for a player of Matt O'Reilly's uh, calibre and talent. Yeah, and I, uh, as I say, I, I have no qualms about him being here until the end of the season. I uh, don't think Celtic would entertain any bids in January. Again, it would have to be something that matched their value or their evaluation of them. But, you know, I again, I reiterate, I love Matt O'Reilly. I want him to stay for as long as he can. But I'm also a realist as well. Got lots of comments coming in about it, so we'll take, we'll take a few. Thomas Gallagher, morning, Thomas, how are you doing? The next step for Matt is cement his place in his Danish squad. He's going nowhere. That's the talk we like to hear. Hey, Thomas, Jerry or, Rat, or Jerry or Ross saying, hope Matt's not leaving soon. I'm not saying he is. I'm just. I was just responding to Matt Matt O'Reilly's own comments, Jerry. That was all. Pete G. You can't bear the thought of Matt O'Reilly leaving. He's the best natural talent that Celtic have had at the club in a long, long time. I agree with that, Pete. Not often I agree with you, Pete, but I agree with that. Pablo sixty seven. Celtic need to do all they can to keep Matt O'Reilly. And Michael Ross saying home looked promising, but way too early to compare him with Matt O'Reilly. Well, Michael, you heard me saying I wasn't making it comparison about the player's ability, I'm just talking about the actual fact that could he step up and become that player that Matt O'Reilly is. Hazel Finn, one and Hazel, Ericsson who was drawn from the Danish squad, maybe it's a chance for O'Reilly. My sentiments and thoughts exactly, Hazel, I think that you'll find that that might happen. Pete McGee, if Matt O'Reilly carries on, he started, he's nailed on to be player of the year, in my honest opinion. That's a fair shout, he could be player of the year. Seamus Gallagher, Peter Grant knows Big Matt very well, so hopefully he's a word in his ear, tells him to stay and don't make the mistake of other players who have never made it in the Premier League. Who's to say he's going to go to the Premier League? He could go elsewhere. Pablo 67, if he was to go, it would be Celtic's record-breaking transfer fee easily. And Gordon Coney saying, I think Celtic should enjoy him while he's here and wish him all the best when he does go, as he will make the club a pretty penny. Exactly. And David Reese said, he also tweeted, what a response, love this team. He did. So read into those things, what you will, Aidan. Uh, but, yeah, I just thought those quotes were intriguing because it kind of came out of left field. He was talking about nice man Kyogo and all that and, you know, his Danish dream and then all of a sudden he just went bang and he uh, said this, don't know what the future holds, we'll see what happens type thing. But, again, he's only responding to a question that's put to him, isn't he? Yeah, I think that is always worth pointing out. It's not like he's just been getting interviewed about something completely different and he's came out with that or he's tweeted out or whatever, it's been a specific answer to that question. And just one of those things, Tony. Uh, I'm sure there's been plenty of examples. I, I know I touched on Hitati and Kyogo, uh, Roderick previously in the past there. Well, when players are playing well, there's just going to be natural links to the Premier League. Yeah. It happens, not just with Celtic, loads of teams that, you know, there's going to be English teams sniffing around talent. I think O'Reilly, there's the added aspect of the fact that he fits the English players quota uh, yes. down south when he was born there so that would obviously fall into uh, you know European as well as domestic squad which is a big thing for them down there which you know could play into Celtic's hands in terms of the fee because they could command that because it'll be more of a sort of sort of prized asset for that reason as well as obviously he's that footballing ability so yeah, yeah I, I think I'm in agreement with you. I, I don't see you really leaving anytime soon in the near future. I think it would be the, the summer at, at the earliest and hopefully it'll be a bit longer than that given his deal. Celtic shouldn't be under pressure to sell Matt O'Reilly or Hitati or Kyogo or, or Maida this summer <laughs> or even arguably the year after because they've got so long left on their deals and that's something that We've sort of praised the club for. We've also had our frustrations with the transfer window at times, as, as I'm sure many fans have, and hopefully some of those issues will be addressed in January in the summer. But in terms of getting players signed up to contracts, with the exception of David Turnbull, which I know you and I touched on on uh, Monday, I think it was, we were talking about yep, that. Was, yeah. uh, Celtic have been pretty good in terms of getting guys that either their contracts are going to be up uh, this year or next year, getting them signed up on long-term deals, so if they do leave, are protected, and you also don't feel under pressure to sell them. So 
yeah, I, I, I don't have any sort of worries about Aurelia moving on anytime soon. And I'm happy to come back and revisit that. Don't know if <laughs> my face come January, but I, I, I don't think it will. I, I think Aurelia will be here for a bit longer. We'll reconvene on that then, Aidan. Being with G, Tony, you're forgetting how pathetic the Celtic board can be when somebody flashes the cash. That's very true at times as well. And Steve McGrory, morning, Steve. How you doing? I like Odin and he has potential. I have to say he did not take advantage of his start on Sunday. He was okay, but could have done so much more against a poor side. More to the point, he didn't impress Brendan Rodgers. That's true. Brendan Rodgers had a, a word with him, didn't he, and said that he has to do more. But again, that's just the, the Brendan Rodgers pep talk, isn't it? Jerry are all coming in and saying, hope nobody comes in with a massive bid or the board will take it. And Pete G's hurt. I have to wash my mouth out. He says, Tony, don't often agree with me. I'm hurt. Sorry, Pete. Did I hurt your sensibilities there, sir? Although he's put two laughing emojis, so he's probably kind of kidding on there. And Francis Lester saying he thinks the young boy has all the attributes to grow into match role. If he does, in fact, move on, he's talking about Odin Tiago home. So, yeah, a lot of... Uh, Again, I like getting people's opinion on these things, so that's why I'm uh, open, throwing it up and opening up to the comment section and lots of people will have their own thoughts on matters. Now, talking about players and contracts, Aidan, it's finally coming round to possibly being on the table. A new deal for Liam Scales, potentially in the offing. He's played the last 15 games for Celtic. He's currently keeping... Mike Navrovsky, Nat Phillips and Gustav Lager-Bielka out of the team. And he stepped up due to the defensive crisis. He's got 18 months left in his deal. But Rogers, this is what Brendan Rogers said about Liam Scales' situation. I think it's something that I'm sure the club and his representative will look at. It doesn't sit with me, it doesn't sit well with me. So when players are going down to the final stages of their contract, I think you only need to look at the fact that I've chosen him to play and very consistently in games. There are also players back now fit that are pushing him hard, but he's still performing to a high level. As I said to him, it's about consistency. Keep cho- keep showing that you can be keep showing that you can be consistent and stay focused. But there's no doubt that he's stepped in and done really well. Now I think I don't know if it's yourself and myself that have spoken about him, but I certainly said he's proven to be one of Brendan Rogers trusted lieutenants on the part now. And I think the biggest compliment to uh, Liam Scales is that people are now saying it's Cameron Cattler Vickers and Liam Scales as a defensive partnership moving forward. And it's Liam Scales jersey to lose. And ever since Ibrooks, I think he's won the hearts and minds of the Celtic supporters, hasn't he? Absolutely. I mean, he's barely put a foot wrong in that time. And I think if he has, it's been the odd thing in the Champions League. And let's be honest, plenty of Celtic players have made mistakes in the <laughs> Champions League this season, Tony, to, to be blunt about it. Yeah, he, he's been a, a revelation really since he came in. I think that sort of first season under Posta Coglu, he was in and out of the team a bit uh, due to injuries, really. I know he scored a couple of cracking goals, but I, I think he's said himself that he could kind of tell after like the new year in that campaign he wasn't going to have much input then went to Aberdeen but by all accounts had a successful loan spell sort of transitioning into that centre half role which he's now also featuring for Celtic but I think at the start of this season most people thought it'd be a loan and a move away and as we've said before good thing he stayed because it was an absolute crisis at centre back when he came in <laughs> uh, it was unlucky obviously and we've touched on before how there has been issues with the transfer window but the one position Celtic did have plenty of depth in, in terms of signings was the centre back role Given you obviously brought two in, gave Stephen Welsh a new contract, etc. But fair point scales that game at Ibrox, I think probably fans would have, would have been a bit concerned about that defensive partnership, Tony. I, I don't think that's that's harsh to say. Uh, it's maybe harder to look back on now because he's played so well. But at the time, I think there was real concerns going into that game from a defensive standpoint. Uh, obviously, he played well that day. I think he. Got player of the match, didn't he? If, if I remember rightly, he did. Yeah, he he got man of the match, Andy, yeah. Was, well deserved it. He, he played pretty well that day. And since then, he's he, he's kicked on. And he's been excellent, and he's he's very deserving of a, a new deal, which sounds like it's going to be pretty near to completion based off Brendan Rodgers' comments. Francis Lester comes in and says Liam Scales for me totally deserves to have a new deal based his performances. He has shown he can keep up his input and has, in my opinion, shown a great mental strength to perform after all the stick he's received. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Francis. I, I just think that 
there is a real mental fortitude there, Aiden, because before Celtic went to Ibrox, the mood music was that Celtic were going to get caned and turned over. And I spent the whole week telling people that they wouldn't because the manager was an elite level manager and he was come up with a formation, including Scales being in that team and Celtic would win the game. And that's how it turned out, to be fair. So uh, Thomas Gallagher saying, if the player of, war, player of the year awards were now, then Scales gets over Matt for me. He's the most improved player by a country mile. But he's also broken into the Republic of Ireland team as well, Aidan. So it's guys like that that you want to see do well, isn't it? Because even Cameron Carter-Vickers was asked the question about skills. He's a central defensive partner. And he praised his mental fortitude and said that, you know, the guy probably thought he was out the door at the end of the season at Celtic. And he's came in and, and now he's, it's his... Uh, his sparring partner, and uh, he's enjoying playing alongside them, and they, they seem to complement each other very well, don't they? Yeah, uh, absolutely, and I think the biggest credit to Liam Scales is obviously when he came in originally it was due to injuries, but as the sort of centre-halves have came back, firstly Carter Vickers, then Navrovsky's been available, Scales has still been in the team. Navrovsky was a player I think a lot of us at the start of the season were excited about. He profiled well in the scouting reports, uh, you know, he, he played at a relatively high level for like a Warsaw in Europe. Obviously, hadn't uh, played against actually Brendan Rodgers' team at Leicester, so it was clearly a player the manager was aware of and excited about. We thought he's going to be the sort of natural successor to Carroll Starfield. Now, that could be the case down the line, but at the moment, it is Liam Scales' jersey, as you touched on earlier. And yeah, I think he's very deserving of a, a new contract as a result of that. Pablo 67 skills deserves a new contract. He's proved a lot of people wrong, including myself. And Steve McGrory comes in. But for Lewis and Matt, Liam might not have been man in the match on Sunday. But again, he was superb. Surprised that Nats on the bench every week would like Mike to get some more game time. Yeah, I uh, I thought skills was excellent on Sunday as well. But he was outshone a bit, wasn't he? But I guess that's uh, that's testament to himself because his concentration levels were were fantastic, and he coped with Duke and uh, Mayofsky, no problem at all. Uh, and Des Harkin comes in to say, the scale of a player is grabbing your chance when you get the opportunity, fair play to Scales. And Hazel Finn comes in, Scales. Scales' biggest compliment is CCV, is hardly ever mentioned. Cameron Catterwick is able to do his thing without worrying about his defensive partner. Great partnership in JGB coming in. He'll hail large scale, surely should get a new five-year deal. Well, I think... Uh, I think certainly four or five years seems to be the norm with Celtic, doesn't it? So it wouldn't surprise me if uh, he was if that kind of if those kind of terms were put in front of him, and I, and I think Liam Scales would be delighted to sign them. I don't think anybody's more surprised than Liam Scales at the turnaround in his fortunes. But you know, I I did a deep dive on him when I spoke to his former players and coaches, and they told me that he he was a he was a level-headed guy and he could take what was thrown at him and. And I, I think you have to applaud it. And as I say, it's it's players like that, the kind of Cinderella story of it all, which I wrote about, uh, quoting Caddyshack and all that, the film, but at the time. But yeah, I, I just think it's a it's a real feel-good story, isn't it? It warms the heart. Stories like that, where players do think they could be on their way out, and all of a sudden, you know, you're catapulted into that Celtic defence at Ibrox, you're playing in the Champions League, and you're more than holding your own. Absolutely, I think it is in terms of Champions League stuff because I know I had touched on maybe is it sort of mistake here or there he'd made as lots of players have in that tournament. But the game against Atletico Madrid at home, he was I know O'Reilly got I think he got player of the match in that game and that was deserved. But I think the sort of best player after that night was probably William Scales. <laughs> he won basically everything against really really yeah. top players such as Anto Angriesman, Murata, two of the best forwards in the world who I'm sure would get in pretty much any team and Scales more than competed that night. Won basically in the air, his passing was good under pressure. That was probably a real sort of breakout night for him. And yeah. Obviously Celtic fans before it we'd all been praising him, but I think for maybe a lot of people that tuned into that game off from a media perspective, outside of obviously outlets like herself, that was where he started to get sort of more of his uh, sort of respect paid to him which is deservedly so because I think it was said on the radio that night at the sort of start of this year he was obviously in the Aberdeen team at lost to Darville and I think he even got booked in that game and it was just also a nightmare time for Aberdeen 
uh, you know, not long before Jim Goodwin gets sacked after that. And probably at that point, if you'd said to him you're going to be playing in the Champions League and playing well against Atletico Madrid that come the end of this year, they would have probably thought you were crazy. So, yeah, no, fair play to Liam Scales. He's, he's, he's been phenomenal. And, yeah, fingers crossed that a new deal sort of going to be in the offing for him. Andrew Gillia, a left footed centre back is vital. Scales stays. Yeah, of course he's staying. Brian McGinty, thank goodness Scales didn't go to Aberdeen. But I do think Celtic are getting the rewards of them playing a full season with Aberdeen. That's a valid point. I think that's a, a great point that Celtic are reaping the rewards and benefit of that. Scales is a future captain, says Thomas Gallagher. Future Celtic captain, I'm assuming he means by that. And uh, Seamus Gallagher comes in and says Scales is a great leader of the game and he makes it look so easy. But I think uh, I think the Celtic supporters are just delighted for him. You know, in, Andrew Galea enjoys Scales' interview with the Irish squad. And Steve McGrory comes in and saying about uh, Yang. I think he was saying that Scales was he had the man in the match. He, he was, yeah, first half definitely thought Yang faded a bit in the second half before his injury. So there you go. Smell the glove. Caddy Shack Tony, now you're talking yes for those who are. Uh, are, are I was uh, the Cinderella story, you know, the, the Bill Murray bit when he's commentating on himself, winning the Masters as the greenskeeper. Yep, indeed. Anyway. We digress, but yeah, I'm just delighted that uh, Celtic are kind of getting their ducks in a row, Aiden, in terms of the players. You have to protect what you have and the assets that you have, and I think uh, I think the surprise element to Liam Scales is is what's uh, heartwarming to the Celtic supporters more than anything. But now they realise that they have a player of repute, somebody that can be trusted, and uh, in he deserves all the accolades that are coming his way, basically. Yeah, no, no, he's well deserving of all, all the praise, Tony, and it will be interesting now to see. I, I don't think Brendan really Norris will tweet too much with these uh, last two Champions League games still to come because obviously Nevrosky's not in that squad. Yep. So I'd imagine Scales will have his position at least until then, but I think even after that, he's deserving of it until something comes up. I don't know what it's, it's, it's going to take at the moment. Is it going to be somebody making a major mistake or is it going to be... Uh, maybe for Nevrosky to come in, is it going to be an injury to Carter Vickers for him to drop out or be suspended and Nevrosky comes in? I, I don't know of it. Uh, it's, that's definitely going to be an interesting battle. And look, it's healthy. I think we've got issues with parts of the squad in terms of depth, Tony, don't we? But it's centre-back. It's healthy to have plenty of guys, I'm sure, challenging and wanting to be in and around and featuring regularly. So, yeah, it, if players are hungry and competing for places, that's only a positive. There's also the... You know, moving forward, would Celtic play three centre backs? Aiden, that kind of thing with with Cameron Carter, Vickers, Navrovsky, and Liam Scales as your three centre backs. If that's your thinking, because you have shelled out money on Mike Navrovsky and not seen too much of him, but I think it's testament to Liam Scales that he's keeping what seven and a half million pounds worth of talent on the bench uh, with these displays. But and then there's also the the argument: Would you bring Navrovsky in and move scales to left back because he could play there. It's, there's all sorts of variables with that moving forward. All we know is that Brendan Rodgers has a trusted player that can play at the back and you just want him to continue on that trajectory, don't you? You don't want him to hit any kind of comfort zone. And I, I don't imagine that a player like Liam Scales would ever get complacent. But sometimes you know you hear that you know, that expression that Players are buying into their own hype. I wouldn't wish, as you say, for him to be dropped from the team because he's he's made a clanger, etc. But I think he, at this minute in time, he's played 15 games in a row. He's been fully focused in every one of those games. And he has been uh, a star man in a lot of those games, outshone by you know, various performers like Matt O'Reilly and Yang and Palmer uh, on Sunday. But... He can be forgiven for that, can't he? Yeah, I think particularly with Lu Louise Palmer at the weekend, even the best players would be getting outshone by him because he was absolutely phenomenal. But yeah, I, I've, I've been really impressed by his scales, as I'm sure everyone has. And it, it's, it's good to see that uh, he, he's been making an impact because he probably was a player that a lot of fans had written off. And I don't think that's unfair. You know, he, he was pretty far out there. Even before he went out on loan to Aberdeen, that sort of first season under... And he was pretty far out the pretty far down the pecking order, really near the end of that campaign. He didn't know really he featured, did he? So 
No. Yeah, it, and in the second half of that season, I should say, I only played a few games in the first half, but it, it, so it's a real positive to see him back in, and it seems like that sort of switch to playing at centre back the way worked in his favour. And I kind of feel that that is his role now. I, I know he did touch on the left back thing, but I feel that if Taylor was injured, or you know, if Rogers was if didn't fancy Taylor or be anyway, and it was around about a transfer window, I think he'd be more likely to want him to go and bring a left back in and then just keep scales in the centre back role because he's played so well. But yeah, I think having a left footed a defender in that role, as somebody touched on in the comments, is important. We've seen it at times with Starfelt as much that I, I, I did really like Carol Starfelt. I know it wasn't everybody's cup of tea, but I thought he was a pretty good player overall for Celtic at times because he was right footed playing in the left uh, centre back role. He, he was a bit awkward and he did struggle. So I think that was one of the main reasons Celtic signed Navroski, obviously, that he was able to play that position. And, you know, the fact that scales fall into that bracket as well, I'm sure that's helping his game to an extent as well. Pablo 67 saying scales and Cameron Carter Vickers for the foreseeable future. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Indeed, it's not broke, so I don't need to fix it. And I had forgotten that uh, scales had played for Aberdeen against Davo. Just shows you how well he's done because normally something like that could dog you and follow you around, but everybody's forgotten about that. Conveniently, Aiden, haven't they? I'd imagine anybody from Aberdeen Football Club that was involved <laughs> in that game have just tried to be it, Tony. I don't blame him. Uh, yeah, but I no, I just I actually yeah, I hadn't even considered it until I heard it on the radio that night, and then I, I went out, I went back and checked. So yeah, I think that's uh, definitely going to be something that's maybe included in write ups at William Scales come the end of the season, assuming he, he keeps sort of playing as he is. Indeed. Well, new deal in the offing for Scales. Here's hoping that. Celtic uh, offer the Irishman uh, a new contract. He's got he's still got eighteen months in his contract left to run. But the comments from Brendan Rodgers seem to suggest that uh, that's something that Celtic and his representative will be talking to sooner rather than later. Now, Aidan, I know you're a busy, busy man, and uh, so we shall wind it up there. That's thirty-two minutes. So international breaks always. It's kind of they're always very slow, aren't they? The slow days. Can't wait for a week and Sunday or a week and Saturday when Celtic get back to uh, normal league duty. But we try and spread it out in terms of topics that we cover over the week. And uh, yeah, so today was Matt O'Reilly and Liam Scales. We'll be back tomorrow to talk about goodness knows what, but there's always something to talk about with regards to Celtic. We say thank you to MPH Group. So for all your plumbing, heat and kitchen and bathroom needs, and the Navi and Boiler promotion, check out the links to the websites and all that in the description of this video. And we also say if you enjoy what we do, then why not subscribe? Cost you four pounds for four months. That's a recent offer that, the offer that at the moment, or eighteen pounds for a yearly subscription. You can subscribe to the Celtic Way website and help help promote top quality journalism and the process as well and support it. And it's and you hit that subscribe button at www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. That's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. All the videos on there are free, but we need your help in keeping doing those free videos by you guys hitting the subscribe video, uh, button as well. And thank you to all the commenters. We try and read as many out as possible. You know what it's like. If we didn't read your comment today, we'll hopefully read it tomorrow. Aidan, thank you. I've enjoyed that, fella. I've enjoyed your company twice this week. Just hoping we'll do it again at some point. But, hey, I know you're a busy, busy boy. Eh? But cheers for that. Appreciate it, sir. Cheers, Tony. Always a pleasure. And uh, Hazel Finn, great show. Thank you, Hazel. Appreciate that. And uh, a couple of other... Uh, Great pod, guys. Always good to keep Celtic fresh in the mind. Hell, hell, says Francis Lester. Cheers, Francis. Appreciate that. Jerry O'Raw, brilliant show again, lads. Cheers. Thank you. We can't do it without you. See you all tomorrow. Uh, five past ten-ish for the benefit of Pete McGee. And I'm sorry, Pete, I didn't mean to say disagree with you. I love you, really. You know, we love everybody in the Celtic Way community. Take care, guys. See you all tomorrow. <laughs>